Jimmy. What's the situation on that order for Spain? Um, started loading. Be ready to go first thing in the morning. Edinburgh? Uh, that's gone. Payroll finished? Uh, no, no, not quite. Uh, there's still that overtime to calculate. Uh, you manage. You always do. See ya. Yeah. the best yet. Is Dad still in? Uh, no. I'm not hurt him to wait, would I? Well, you yeah. know, he's your dad. Anyway, at least you've finished for the day. When you've worked here for 20 years, you don't get home at all. The office? Second from the right. There's the corridor, then an outer office. Then and it's a... always in there? Four o'clock every Friday, yeah. Just in the tray. Nice, isn't it? The old-fashioned way of doing things. Friday is then. Same again, Rachel? Please, yeah. Stella? No, thanks. Bye, Mark. Cut it out. What? Rachel. Since when did you mind? I don't normally, but there ought to be limits, even for you. Well, I just, um, I just hope you'll be fair-minded, Jack. Yeah, well, I was last time, wasn't I? <laughs> well, yes, but that was before we knew that she was... Well, it doesn't bother me. Does it bother you? No, no. No, no, of course not. Uh, that kind of prejudice has no place in the modern police force. Ah, uh, Maureen. Uh, you remember Inspector Frost, of course? Hello again, girl. Sergeant. Right, well, I'll uh, leave you two to it, then. Hmm. Thank you, sir. Well, what about lunch? Oh, right, thanks. No problem. As I remember it, it's your turn to pay. Lady's name, wasn't it, when I was here oh, before you? Oh, yes, yes. No, um, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, everything's fine. Yeah, we uh, see quite a lot of each other. Good. And uh, you, with, um... Oh, no, finished. Oh. It's OK, it wasn't serious. Oh, good. Jack? Mm. Park house. They've been done again. What, Winky and Twinky? Yeah, suspects unseen. Oh. Well, come on. DS and a DI attending a burglary. Well, it's the fourth time in four days. Same house. Oh. 
Well, I've got the place surrounded. They think he's gone to ground in the attic, sir. Do they? Really? He's been in the fridge this time. Oh, yeah? There's more stuff missing. Light bulbs. Really? It's just through there. Right. And still no sign of a forced entry again? No, not since the first time on Sunday. You know what I think, Miss Parfit? I think he's living in. What? Yeah. I think you owe this lady some rent. <laughs> For goodness sake, Liz, stop fussing. Thank you. Right, that's the lot. If anything else is still missing, you will let us know, won't you? You fit? Yes, go. Right. We'll be in touch. Yes, thanks. Bye. Last Sunday, yeah, he threw the kitchen window. But when I'd have walked round the house, like, I thought, well, this is big enough for free, isn't it? So you went bed and breakfast and carried on thieving? It beats dust in the doorways. Oh, please. This is a list of items reported stolen from Park House since Sunday. Some of them still seem to be missing. Uh, I already shifted some. You sold them? No, uh, I put them in storage, like. Where? Do I get any dinner? Where's Dad? Mum. Yeah? Is he out of one of his bimbos? I suppose he must be. Don't you mind? Just because we're loyal to each other doesn't mean we have to be faithful. It is only sex, Kevin. You going out? Yeah, pub. We're on at nine, then I'm meeting Rachel. Oh. Right. Is that okay with you? Yeah, sure. She come and listen. I'll probably hear you from here. Still all right for later? Sorry? 
We'll be finished by about half ten, so do you fancy coming down the Sherwood or something? Oh, I can't, Kevin. I'm sorry. Didn't I tell you? What? I've got to go soon. Well, now, in fact, I was just waiting until you finished. Where are you going? I'll see you on Saturday. I'll play something more modern. Rachel! Rachel! You need a dishwasher. Yeah. You're not very good, are you? Really? Right, I am going to leave the rest and be decadent. Wine in bed. Good idea. They don't. Hello. Yes. Yes, she is. Who shall I say is speaking? Oh, right. Hang on, I'll get it for you. Shirley, it's your brother. Oh. Hello, David. as soon as I can. No, I'll... I'll leave straight away. What's the matter? Is your mother ill again? She's dead. What? Ah, uh, stroke. Oh, Shirley. I am sorry. I'm going to have to go up there. Yes, yes, of course you are. I'll drive you up. Um, no, uh, you don't need to do that. I can um, get the last train. Yes, I know, but... No, uh, it would be awful for you, Jack, and I don't want you to meet my family in these circumstances. Look, that doesn't matter. Really, I'll, I'll be fine. Really. Are you sure? I am. Um... um I'd better go and, um... I'll give you a lift to the station, then, when you're ready, all right? Thank you. There you go, Kevin. First in line. Buy me a drink later. Cheers. It's the only way, son. You don't know glass till you've handled it, you don't know men till you've worked with them. And you don't know women till... Get out of the way! You've got to be joking. Now, for God's sake! That is only money! Kevin! All right.
lost the control. What's occurring? Suspect vehicle abandoned in conduit lane. Suspects have decamped. Well, where are they? Don't know, sir. There were three of them. Wages snatched, box of the glass. One of them was armed. Descriptions? Dark clothes, hoods. One with red hair. Red hair? You come with me. Come on! for armed support. Good point. Stuart Penrice, isn't it? Blagger of this parish. You here to confess? I don't believe this. Jimmy devoted his working life to you. What was it, 20 years, 30? What do you do in return? You get him shot. Do you think I'm happy about that, eh? Proud? I don't know. I don't see a lot of remorse. Well, you want to open your bloody eyes, then. It's all right, Stella. Look, I can't bring Jimmy back, can I? All we can do now is catch the bastards that did it. Yeah, and anyway, bookkeepers are ten a penny, right? Don't! All right. I made a big mistake. You've never made naff all. Ah, Mr. Boxley, can I have a word? Yeah, uh, come in. Thank you. Come through. This is my wife, Stella. This is Detective Inspector... Frost. Uh, you know my son, Kevin. Yes, good morning. Morning. Um, well, the thing is, uh, obviously, with a wages snatch, there's always a possibility of insider knowledge, and I was wondering if you've got a list of former employees. Hmm. There's plenty of them. He sacks one a month to keep the rest on their toes. Kevin, shut up! As a matter of fact, we've got a suspect in custody. And I was wondering if you'd be willing to attend an ID parade. Yeah, too right I would. This way, sir. The two at the back, can you just shuffle forward a little bit? Number seven. You marked his card for him. Oh, yes. Why would I do that? Because I've got form and I was in the area. Oh, dear. Victimisation. I am sorry. I'll get you a complaints form. Later. ID's not enough anyway. Sorry? Who told you that, then? What? Identification is all we've got. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what they make at Boxley's Glass Factory? I suppose I could hazard a guess. Yeah, and if you guessed glass, you'd be correct and go to top of the class. 
Do you know what was in that yard before you jumped in your getaway car? Hmm? I'll tell you. It was a great big skip full of broken glass. Misshapes. They throw all the rejects in that great big skip and they smash. And do you know what happens to glass when it smashes? Hmm? All the air around it becomes full of tiny fragments. Particles, invisible to the naked eye. And they settle on the ground in a great big carpet. You can't see them, but they are there. Consequently, what do you think would happen to someone who was wearing, say, trainers who, you know, walked? On that carpet. Thousands and thousands of tiny fragments would become embedded in the soul. I'll tell you something else that's interesting about glass. Hmm? All glass is different. Boxley's glass is unique. What do you think we'll find when your trainers come back from the labs? Hmm? So you see, Stuart, identification's not all we've got. It's just the clincher. Hello. Uh, you're living burglar. The list of stolen property. He's told us where to find the rest. Great. Come in. I think his plan was to salt it away out here whenever he had the chance. Then if he got rumbled and had to leave the house, it'd be easy enough to sneak back into the garden. There we go. Oh, some of this looks quite valuable. I think so, yes. Most of it's Marion's. Your wrist, is it okay? Yes, thanks. I'm sorry if tending the wounded got you into trouble. Better take these indoors and check them. It's an interesting old house. Have you lived here long? Just over a year. Marion inherited it from her mother. We used to live in a flat. Oh, quite a difference. Yes. It's very nice, having so much space. We're not in each other's pockets all the time. Only I think it's a bit too big, really. Sometimes you feel lonely even when you're together. How about you? Flat? House? Oh, uh, flat, yes. Yeah, so. Hello. You're home early. From. It was on the map. What? Have you seen or heard anyone? We wouldn't, would we? Not out here. It's the same at the factory, Dad. Have you had any decent security? Oh, for God's sake, don't start on that again. Yeah, well, the camera would have caught whoever delivered this. Cameras at the factory would have caught Pen Rice. You wouldn't need to give evidence in court. Bastards. What was that detective's name again? Frost! What does Boxley actually want? Relocation? A new identity? What he wants is a 24-hour armed guard family and premises. Out of the question. We haven't the resources. Besides, the trial could be months away. Well, we ought to do something. You take this note seriously? Yes, I do. These are armed blaggers we're dealing with. We've already got one man dead. Yes, 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 yes. All right. He can have a PC outside his house. No. Around the clock. And that'll have to do, Jack. Unless you've got a uniform or two bedded away in that office of yours, no. have you? No. No, right. Arrange it with the duty officer. Start as soon as possible. All right. Thank you. Quite flattering, really, isn't it? Do you recognise the handwriting? No, mate. 
I don't know that many people who can actually write, to be honest. <laughs> well, there are two obvious possibilities. One, your fellow blaggers are so much in love with you, they can't bear the thought of being separated from you for 20 years. Or they have a vested interest. I.e., when you split up after the raid, you hid the money and they want to know where it is. On the other hand, there's always Janie, I suppose. Do what? Janie. Janie Webster. You're still living with her, aren't you, when you're both out of prison? Now, she can write because she leaves rude messages on our cell walls. God, don't they ever turn these things off? Right, well, how'd you get on in the garden shed? Oh, uh, fine. Yeah, the gear was all there. Good. Well, that's uh, one problem solved. All right, any messages? Your answer machine's blinking, but I haven't... Uh... Oh. Where are you two going? The factory. This time or for? Because I own it. Because Jimmy's work's piling up and someone's got to get on top of it. Got some help then. Ah, Alex, we'll manage. You just get on down the pub. Don't want to disappoint your public. You got your pass signed, then? Don't. It's not like that. Not really. Right. That's all I'm doing. I'm just going to do my face, and then you can take me for a drink. Hmm. Boxley's Glass Factory. List of former employees. I haven't left it in here, have I? No, I've not seen it anywhere, Jack. Oh, I don't know. How's Shirley coping? Oh, fine. Fine, you know, considering. Funerals next week. Oh. You'll be going up there, then, will you? Bit of moral support. Denton Police. Sorry? Could you just hold on a sec, please, madam? There's been another shooting at Boxley's. Oh, well, let's see you here. <laughs> oh, no. Sorry, I'll have to find a phone. Ah, look, the cavalry's arrived. Come to close the stable door, have we? You're OK. Yeah, sure. But no thanks to my non-existent protection officer. Yes, I'm sorry about that. We couldn't arrange it before tomorrow morning. In any case... In any case, he could be dead. God knows how they missed. They didn't miss. You were hit by flying glass, Billy. Don't play for sympathy. You were there with your husband? Not in the room, no. But I heard it. Smash, bang. And I thought I'd be safer at the factory than our home. Did anyone else know that you were there? No. You didn't tell anyone? Like who? Well, did your son know? Kevin? <laughs> Magic! I'll get robbed, threatened and shot at, and you're looking at family? 
He is family, you know, even though he does talk like a prat. Just a process of elimination. Well, let's hope I don't get eliminated first, eh? Right, Howard. I want you to look for any of Penrice's known associates that we haven't checked up on yet. George, I want you to talk to Kevin Boxley. Don't care what his old man says. Mm -hmm. Maureen, I wanted you to check up on all the former employees. I did have a list, but I can't seem to put my hat... Where did you get this? In the incident file under former employees. Stupid place to put it, wasn't it? How many are there? Nine in the last year. Nine? Really? Well, you better get on with it then, hadn't you? OK, chop, chop. Where are you going, Gov? Me, short straw, Janie Webster. Penrice's soulmate. Ah, good morning, morning sir. Mr Boxley sends his regards and he's very glad that your overtime budget is under control. Yes, yes, yes. It's very easy to snipe, Jack. But it's me that carries the financial can, not you. Are there any leads yet? No, not... No, not yet. Um, what about, um, Lawson? Everything, um... Mm, fine. Mm. Nothing to frighten the horses. Life goes on, I suppose. It's a split shift today. You don't mind us asking, though, about last night? I'll tell you, you've got a job to do. I don't see why Dad's got a problem with it. No. So, which pub? Glanville Arms. Mm -hmm. And you were there from? 8.30 onwards. Did you speak to anyone? Yeah, it doesn't. Anyone in particular? Uh, Rachel Mostyn. She's a friend of the family. What's up? Well, it's just I told her that Dad was at the factory. Boxley? Yes, who are you? PC Sims, protection duty. Doesn't seem to be anyone in. Of course they're in Dad's cars here. Mum? Dad? Bunk. Bloody stupid man's done a bunk. Do you know that Stuart's been arrested? No. Well, how would I? It's a blagging. He's incommunicado, isn't he? Mm, that's a long word, Janie. Can you spell finger? Yeah, I can give it an all. Push off. Mm, it's not a very nice. Oh, is this your shopping list? Even slags have to buy food. Yeah, do you mind if I keep it? Put it under my pillow. Thanks very much. Oh, hello, I'm being bleeped. Can I use your phone? You can get out. How are we supposed to protect your dad if we don't even know where he is? Perhaps if you'd done a better job in the first place, he wouldn't have felt the need to disappear. All right. What about you? I don't know where the hell he is. Well, I mean, he obviously doesn't think that you're at risk. I don't suppose it even crossed his mind. Anyway, I'm not a star witness, am I? I never saw the guy's face. I'm hardly likely to be used as a lever. I think even the most optimistic villain wouldn't expect Bill Boxley to give in to that kind of pressure. Well, if he does get in touch, Give us a call, won't you? Yeah, I will. Oh, by the way, you still need the PC outside? I think I'd rather you used him to find Penrice's mates, and quickly. Very well. So, shall I speak to this Rachel Mostyn, or will you? Apparently, she's young and a bit tasty. Well, it's hardly a job for you, then, is it? Run her through the computer first, though, just in case. I have nothing known. Oh, well, in... Oh, that reminds me. Yeah. Where is it? Oh. Ah. Get the graphologist to compare that with the finger pen rice note. It's Janie Webster's handwriting. I want her followed. Get Howard onto it as soon as he comes in. Okay. 
Frost! Oh, you're there. You caught those other two scroats yet? They're still helping with our inquiries. Where are you? This is classified information, right? Only you and Stella know. In case of dire emergency or job done, you tell nobody. Yes, all right, all right. Stop prattling about. Yeah? Yeah? All right, phone number. Uh, is Stella with you? I'm sorry to keep you waiting, Mrs. Boxley. Your usual room. Thanks. Hello, Mrs. Boxley. Are you all right, Michael? I'll see you in a little while. Hello, the cutting room. Rachel speaking. How can I help you? Sorry? No, I haven't. No, I don't. Sorry. Who is... Good afternoon, Detective Sergeant Lawson. I telephoned earlier. Oh, about Michael? Yes, is he...? One moment. Michael Heathfield, DS Lawson, Denton CID. This is just a routine inquiry. Please take a seat. We have your name as a former employee of Boxley Glass, is that correct? Yeah. Why? As you may know, there was an armed robbery there and a fatal shooting a few days ago. So? Well, as I say, this is just a routine inquiry, but I'd be grateful if you could tell me where you were at 4pm last Friday. Were you here? No. Friday is my afternoon off. So? I was with a woman. I see. Would you mind telling me her name? Helen. Helen Cartwright. I was recommended then, was I? Oh, yes. Highly. Oh. Only I don't mean to be rude, but you seem more like a barbershop person. Oh, oh thank you. No, a biased bloke I know, Bill Boxley. Oh, Billy. Mm. Right. Mm. Would you like a conditioner? Uh, uh yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. Carry on. You heard about the business at his factory, I suppose? Yeah, I did. Wasn't it awful? Mm. Oh, Jimmy Dunn. Mm. You haven't seen Bill in the last couple of days, have you? No, no, I haven't. Uh, don't know where he is. Funny, someone else was asking me that earlier. Really? Who was that? Don't know, just some bloke on the phone. Oh. But you don't know where Bill is. Why? <clears throat> Detective Inspector Frost, Denton CID. All right. Don't stop, carry on. It's nice. Do you? Know where he is? No. But, uh, <clears throat> you are a friend of his. Well, sort of. We hardly got started when he disappeared. How do you know he disappeared? Well, if I don't know where he is, he must have, mustn't he? He was attacked at his factory on Saturday night. You knew he was there, didn't you? Yeah. 
Kevin told me when I was at the pub. Hmm. You know a guy called Stuart Penrose? Penrose? Hmm. No. A girl called Jane Webster? No, I don't think so. Hmm. How do you get to know Bill Boxley and Kevin then? Well, I used to work at the factory temping. That's before I got into this game full time. Did you really? Careful. It looks nice. Yeah, well, for 15 quid, it ought to be ruddy irresistible. Tell me, what you got? I'm not sure. I've seen everyone on the list. No problem except for one. Michael Heathfield, no previous. Got sacked by Boxley four months ago for bad timekeeping. Now works as a part-time gym instructor at Ferndale's. Where? Health farm, other side of Denton Lacey. And? He just seemed unsettled. You ought to take that as a compliment. Right. Has he got an alibi? Yeah, a woman. Only George Toulon reckons the address is a bit swish. Oh, does he? Oh, well, no problem. So you met Michael Heathfield at the uh, Health Hydro? Yes, I'm a regular. And was he here with you all Friday afternoon? Yes. We made love on the floor and then had tea. Oh. Do sit down. Yeah, thank you. And is this a regular relationship? I don't wish to pry, but it does add weight to an alibi in court. Oh, yes, very regular. Well, there's no Mr. Cartwright anymore, so why not? Michael's young, virile, and has a beautiful body. Who could ask for more? I mean, I don't know about you, but I've been through commitment, entanglement, love. I'm not looking for any of that again, thank you. Carnal pleasures will do nicely from now on. Anyway, you mentioned court. What's the wicked boy been up to? Well, on the date and time in question, there was an armed robbery at Boxley's glass factory, and a man was shot dead. What? You didn't know? Well, I... I knew there'd been a shooting, yes, but... God almighty! We've got no evidence that Michael was in... Do you know what he told me? Sorry? When he asked me to cover for him, that's how he put it, cover for him, if anyone asked. He phoned me Friday evening, told me he just had a little prang in his car, and if anyone found out, he'd get the sack because he's a disqualified driver. And I swallowed it. He sounded very shaken on the phone. I expect he did. Yes. Well, he can forget about the floor that particular Friday. No commitment means just that. Of course, temporary loss of an alibi doesn't mean he feels guilty. Very true. Just nick him. Right, go on then, Lawson. You know where the gym is. It's all right, don't worry. No, we'll be discreet. What the hell are you doing here? Well, right now, I'm on my way to be wrapped in seaweed. Just sit here, sit down a minute, will you, please? So, this is your hideaway? Yeah. Well, it's perfectly safe. They had plenty of security. Your husband called me. Right. So that's you and me that know where he is. Keep it like that. What are you doing here, anyway? Crash diet? I mean, I'm investigating a murder, Jimmy Dunn. We haven't forgotten, Jimmy. Why do you think Bill's saving his own hide so he can nail the bastard all who right, killed him? All right. What's Michael done? You know him? Well, yeah, of course I do. He works in the gym. He used to work in your factory. You didn't know that? No. Well, I can't remember them all, can I? And Michael's never said. So? Assisting with our inquiries. Small world, isn't it? Right, there you go, George. All right, if we go via your place, Michael. Have a little look round. You got a warrant? 
George, show him your warrant. What warrant? You can't get the staff these days. If you have your radio, you might call in and get us some backup. Drive on. Okay, thanks. What exactly are you hoping to find anyway? Oh, just the humdrum necessities of life. Sawn off shotgun, 15,000 pounds in used notes. Failing that, all your clothes and footwear. Come on. Uh, Gov? Yeah? There's an IC1 male legging it down the garden path. Please, stop! Stop! Who is he, Michael? Dunno. Burglar. You're not doing yourself any favours, son. What's his name? Conrad. Des Conrad. No joy, mate. He's gone. <sighs> yeah, here you are. Here you go, Desmond Conrad. Assault, car crime, burglary, housebreaking. But no armed robbery? Hmm? No. <sighs> oh, dear, oh, dear. What? What? Known associates also include Stuart Penrice. Stuart Penrice? We've done all his known associates. No one mentioned Des Conrad. Oh, well, it isn't my fault. The cross referencing must have been done when I was in for my hernia operation. He invited me out for a drink. Conrad? Yeah. Yeah. We used to meet under stairs. Started chatting about work. I had a bit of a chip on my shoulder at the time. You know, about the way. Boxer, give me the elbow. Anyway, after a bit, he introduced me to Penrice. And they put this proposition to me, like. First of all, it was just a bit of info on the layout of the place. Then they offered me 25% to come in on it proper. Said it was a free ander. Made it sound pretty easy. But I swear they never mentioned guns. It was a robbery. What do you think they were going to use? Water pistols? What happened to the money? Well, I haven't got it. All I've got is this bang in me head. What happened to the gun? Has Conrad got it? Don't know. Uh, hello. Is Shirley there, please? Oh, I see. Yes. Yeah, well, oh, it's all right. No, not to worry. Mm? It's Jack Frost, uh, about tomorrow. Yes. Yes. Uh, right. Would you tell her that I'll be there? Thank you.
These shotgun pellets from both shootings at the factory are the same grade shot. So they could have been fired from the same gun. And the getaway car? Uh, yeah, that was stolen in Swindon the day before the robbery. No witnesses to that. And no forensic on it yet either. But we have got the report on Penrice's trainers. There are glass particles, and they do match samples from the factory. Same with a pair found at Heathfield's flat. Ah, right. And the threatening note for handwriting. Ah, no, that doesn't match Heathfield's or Janie Webster's. We're still trailing her, I hope. Yes, Gov. Nothing of interest, though. Well, we'd better get on and find Conrad, haven't we? Uh, um... Looks like there's a bit of petrol bombing over at Sheldon. Sheldon? Bottle fragments inside the window. Traces of accelerant outside and inside. No kebab occupants? No, sir. And we haven't been able to establish yet who owns the place. It's all right. Don't worry. I know who owns the place. Oh, well. I suppose we ought to go and tell his wife. I'll have you crucified! We don't even know if your husband's been hurt. There's no sign of him. I don't suppose there's a chance that you... Don't you put it on me! Don't you dare! Stella, it's just that I'm trying to cover all the other possibilities. The possibilities are that he got half burnt alive and staggered off to die somewhere else, or the bastards picked him off as he ran out. Either way, it's down to you! Or he wasn't even in there. Well, why hasn't he phoned me then, eh, if he's safe? You're saying he doesn't trust me now. I've been through thick and thin with that man. You can't even begin to understand what we... Look, you're a regular here at this health club, and Heathfield... <gasps> Do me a favour. Look, you relax, you chat. There's got to be a possibility that in the last, what, three and a half months since he's worked here, that you've mentioned the place out at Sheldon. No, never. I haven't got the puff in the gym, and I certainly don't talk in bed. Bed? You've been sleeping with Heathfield? We never did much sleeping, no, but we had the occasional romp. So what? I never mention the mill. Maybe Kevin said something. I mean, he did know the place existed. Yeah, he knew. Let's blame him, shall we? Get you off the hook. No, on second thoughts, let's phone your governor. It's a very serious allegation. Yes. Unlike Mrs. Boxley and her son, I cannot for one moment believe that any breach of confidence on your part was deliberate. But your haphazard way of working is bound to lead to this kind of cock-up. How are you going to feel if Boxley is found dead in a ditch because you left his address in the laundrette? I haven't been to the laundrette, sir. All right, then the chip shop, the supermarket, the all-night coffee stall. Your paper trail could lead anywhere. Couldn't it? Yes. Oh, 
Hello, Michael. How are you today? All right. The yeah, eye frost has just entered the room. Time, 13.20. Have you had your lunch? No? Good. We've got a warrant for your continued detention, so you're going to be with us for another 36 hours. Isn't that nice? Now then, Penrice's girlfriend, Janie Webster. Do you know her? Met her once or twice at a pub. She wasn't in on the robbery involved in the planning? Nah. It was just the three of us. All right, but what about afterwards? Wasn't there to be a rendezvous to hand over the money to get rid of it? Not that they told me. All right, well, who had the money? Who was holding the black plastic sack in the car? Me. Until I bailed out at Woodford Street. Pen Rice grabbed it as I went. So, when he bailed out, he could have met Janie and given the money to her before he got nicked. I suppose. There's one thing you should know about Janie, though. What's that? She's been knocked off by Conrad as well. Yeah. I'm just going to the greengrocer and then I'm off back home, all right? Could you spare me a few minutes? Well, I'm sorry, but I really do have to... I've been waiting. I'm sure you're very busy, but my time's valuable too. Yes. Yes, of course. Excuse me. Would you like to come through? Jack. You can leave us alone. Please. Liz and I have been together for six years. We've got a loving relationship. You're just selfishly coming between two people who care for each other. Now, hold on. Liz and I are just... Just friends. She doesn't need a friend. She doesn't need anything that you can give her. Well, I'm sorry, but I think that's for Liz to decide. Look, I do understand how you feel, but I'm not Liz's keeper, and nor are you. I'm sorry if... No, you're not. You're a bitch. A hard, callous bitch. You're just using her. When have you ever had a lasting relationship? And what's in it for Liz, eh? Besides a free dinner. You're a disgrace. Using your work to worm yourself into people's lives. Excuse me, sir. Ah, oh, Maureen. I want you to take over Janie Webster. DC Howard's cover has been blown. That's her picture there under her dress. Take her GP car on a radio. If she goes anywhere other than a shopping parade, call in. Just one minute. Sir, we are in the middle of a murder inquiry. I think private lives can wait. Go on. Yes, go. My office. First thing tomorrow. Please. Control from Lawson. Receiving, over. Receiving. Message for Inspector Frost, please. I think I've located Conrad. He appears to be unarmed with Janie Webster at the Super Bowl. Don't go out tonight. It's better if I do. It's better if we both go out a bit more. Separately. We'll be far more interesting for each other if we let each other breathe a bit. We've always done things together. Why does that suddenly have to stop? It doesn't. There are just times when... I don't want to hurt you, Marion. I just want us both to... Don't go. Nice 
Nice shot. How are you with a saw knife? Hey, no. Ah! Sorry, son. Slipped out of my hand. Take him away. Thank you. Jack? Yeah. Park House. There's been another incident. That's yours. again and still in intensive care but yeah she's gonna live what happened Marion stabbed her with a bread knife does she know where Marion is no and this happened because you me and Liz yeah you're a silly girl Maureen yeah I don't have had a bit of spice to my interview with Mr. Mullet. Stuff Mullet. You go home and get some sleep. No, I'm fine. You sure? Yeah. Thanks. And I'm sorry, Gov. I'll see you back at the Nick. Shirley, when did you get back? Last night. Why didn't you let me know? Pretend you didn't say that. Look, can we talk? Not now, no. Well, later then, I'll come round. When will you be home? Half an hour. Right, half an hour. Then. Sir. What? It's Marion Parfit, sir. She's here. All right. I went for a walk after it happened. I, I walked all night. But, um, I'm not a violent person. I've hardly ever exchanged words, let alone blows. So, how did you come to? She left her purse in the kitchen and I just followed her in there. She was being so 
reasonable. I suppose that's why I finally snapped. She was talking to me as if I was her mother. No passion, just common sense. I didn't want her to go out. You're lucky being a man. Middle age doesn't mean you lose everything. Sorry that I didn't make it to the funeral. How did it all go? Is it all right? Yes, it was. Oh, good. I know I phoned and said that I'd be there, but, um... See, we had this armed robbery and a, a shooting and... Uh, a witness who was being threatened and, um... You couldn't get away? No. And in any case, you can't handle sickness and death. Murder's okay, but, uh, not sickness and death. Shirley... Why do you think I told you not to come with me in the first place? Because I didn't want you to? I knew you wouldn't want to be there. I made it easy for you, Jack. I went on my own because I cared for you. I know, I know. My mother's dead. I, uh, stood there watching her coffin disappear through the curtains. Feeling this emptiness, this sudden, huge gap in my life, on my own. You had your family there? On my own. And all I could think of was, uh, why isn't he here? Am I being unreasonable? All I want to do is to cling on to him, to feel that he understands, feel he really cares. Why? Why couldn't you make the effort? What is the matter with you? Are you just thick? Are you just selfish? Immature, defeatist, what? Don't shout at me. What gives you the right to shout at me? I don't know. I don't know why I'm shouting at you. I don't know you well enough to shout at you. I should never have let things get this far. No, you shouldn't have. What the hell did you expect? What did you want? Me as I am? No? What then? Some nine-till-fiver who doesn't give a toss about his job? Someone who just wants to come home, go shopping and have a curry every Friday night? Did you think I've ever been that? Do you think it's just lacking a good woman that keeps me working all hours? No. It's what's in here, Shirley. It's what I am. I know. I don't want to change you. Give me some credit. I don't expect a house husband. But there is more to it than that. It is not just your job. I can handle that. Can you? Can you? I wish I could. 
You're always going to let me down. That is the point, and you know it. Because in your heart, you just don't want the commitment. It's as simple as that. Well, you want the shoulder to cry on, you want the sex, but you don't want to give anything in return. You're scared. Scared to just say, I'm here for you whenever you need me. You're scared to mean it anyway. No, you're right. You're right. I knew what you were going through with the funeral and everything. And I couldn't do it. And if I couldn't do it then, well, I thought it was going to be OK. I thought I could make it work. If I could make it work with anybody, it would have been with you. I was just kidding myself. We both were. We need different things, Shirley. And I don't want to use you. No way. You're worth more than that. I think it's best if you find what you want with someone else. I think it's best for both of us. bailed out here. He says. Penrice was arrested in the church here and the getaway car was dumped by Conrad here in Conduit Lane. So the money has got to be along this line somewhere. Not if Penrice gave it to Janie. Yes, but if Janie's got the money and she's in this with Conrad, why threaten the witness? Come to that, why remain in Denton? I mean, if they got 15 grand, they would have cleared out and let Penrice go down. They could have stayed in Denton because we've got nothing on them. Yes, thank you, George. The money has got to be on this line somewhere. Penrice had time to dump it and he did. We couldn't find it before. Just, just go, will you? Go on, go on, the lot of you, just go. Maureen, you better get a warrant and turn Janie's place over, just in case George is right. Well, it's either that or Mullet's office. Up to you. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy pig, how's that? Now with the left hand. I don't know why you're playing so hard to get. We've already got you for resisting arrest and assaulting two police officers. Give it two years is better than 20. I'm sure Stuart Penrice would agree. Who? Where were you? 4 p.m. on Friday. Tucked up with Janie. Yeah, we were here all afternoon. Can anyone confirm that? Mum, she was here. That's right. I was here. So why'd you run away at the bowling alley? Same as Des. I'm scared of police brutality. If you find any dot or a gun, it's been planted. Inspector? Sir. Where's Lawson? 
She's out on inquiry, sir. Not in the hospital, holding hands. Yes, I've been informed, thank you very much. And don't give me any of that private lives guff. Lawson could soon be standing up in court, giving evidence in a crime of passion. A crime that involves a love triangle of the all-female variety of which she is a part. I can't get much less private than that. With due respect, sir, we all make mistakes. Yes, and when we do, we get punished. And don't you forget that either. I don't know what you're complaining about. It's been stuck down the neck. Where are you going? Jimmy Riddle. Too much coffee. Quick. No, it was closed. Call in, get them to phone the council, and find out when it was closed. How many more times I had my back to them? I was kneeling on the floor, and Jimmy Dunn was. It's the funeral this afternoon. I'm sorry, son. It's a bad day. Well, we've got Conrad, but we need something on him. Now, is there anything you can give us? Anything you haven't thought of before? Because if you don't, he's going to walk away from it. Well, I can't help it, can I? Stocky Bill, Dark Hose, I've already told you! Kevin, get a grip. Kevin! <sighs> Not exactly a chip off the old block. Doesn't have a lot of time for his old mum, either. I think he reckons I've done his father in. Kevin, has your dad turned up? Only his van's parked outside the salon. All I know is I got to work this morning and there it was. I didn't see Bill. I haven't heard from him, just his beat up old van was. You didn't touch it? No. I'd rather you let us move it. That's all right.
back! It's frost! It's frost! Used to be my office 20 years ago when I first started. Oh, yes. Sir, what happened to your leg? Just a bit neat, out of the mill. I don't suppose you saw. No, no, no. No. I just had this feeling something was occurring, so I got out. Ten minutes later, a whoosh! In the morning, I crept back from the van. Why did you leave your van outside Rachel's salon? I don't know, really. To frighten her? I wasn't thinking straight. I had this mad idea she might be involved. What? Because she was at the mill that afternoon. Who was? I rang her up. I was bored on my own. Does Stella know about you and Rachel? Oh, yeah. Well, she knew it was in the wind. Bits on the side are not a problem. How do you know that? She might hate your guts for it. Are you married? I was. Well, then you know. There are things you accept, things you don't accept. There's an understanding. Why didn't Stella go with you to the mill? She refused point blank. Reckons it's full of damp. Stella is the only woman I've ever really trusted, and I still do. All right. Bloody miss her and all. Shouldn't you let her know that you're safe? What she doesn't know can't hurt her. If anyone finds me here, I'll know it's you that sleeped. You're going to go on staying here? Well, yeah. I mean, if you've got nothing on this Conrad git, some smart-ass lawyer's going to have him out on bail, and off we go again. I'm not a coward. I just want to survive to put Penrice away. Yeah. Frost. Frost. Jack, they found the money. Where? A public toilet in Sinclair Road. Apparently, they've been sealed up for the last week. Plus, it's still in a plastic sack, so we might get some prints. Thank you, Arthur. I'm on my way. We found your money. Tell Jimmy Dunn's widow. Yes. I think I'll tell Penrice as well. We've taken the money out. I thought you might like to see it anyway. There are some liftable prints on it. And if they're yours, well. well prints on the uh, stolen. Glass on the trainers. An ID witness alive and kicking. Yeah. Of course, it's the day of the funeral today of the bloke who got shot, isn't it? I think it would be optimistic to be looking at 20 years, wouldn't you? I'd say life. Just think about that, eh? Life without Janie. Mind you, she'll be all right. Because she'll have Des Conrad to keep her warm. He'll be out in two. Oh, I'm sorry, did you think your relationship with Janie was exclusive? <laughs> Janie's his alibi. No! <laughs> found anything. Sorry? Would well, you know what's happened to him? My dad. This is his van, right? He'll first have been told he's been burnt alive. Now this turns up. What are you trying to do to me? Our very best, Mr. Botchley. That's what we're trying to do. Excuse me, please. Excuse me. Well, is he dead or is he? <laughs> Haven't we got a right to know? I'm talking to you. Oi! You all right now, son? Yeah? Can I get you a cup of tea? Kevin? Kevin? All right. Just listen to me, son. Listen. Your dad is not dead. He's not. No, he's OK. He's all right. I've seen him. He is. Liar. No, I'm not a liar. I told you, I've seen him. I saw him at the factory about an hour ago. I was at the factory. Mum was at the yes, factory. I know, but he is there. He's there. Honestly, I told you, I've seen him. And he's OK. He's OK. He's OK. He's OK. He's OK.
he's okay. Is he all right? Yeah. Well, he will be. Right. I'm off to see my hairdresser. Stick him under the dryer. You were at the mill. What? Bill Boxley's hideout the day that it was bombed. Did anyone follow you there? Did anyone else know that you were going there? No. He just rang up. It was my afternoon off, so I went. Who else knew that you and him were... I told you before. We'd only just started. Oh, come on, Rachel. You're a hairdresser. I don't discuss my love life. Stella was the only one I suspected. Suspected? I thought extramarital activities were OK. Yeah, well, she wasn't too happy. I was supposed to be Kevin's girl. not a properly convened interview, so when you painfully bang your head after slipping on this recently washed floor, no one is going to know about it. Do what? Sit down. Where's the gun? Stuart Penrice has told me all about it. You were at the robbery. He's gone right off you for some reason. I can't think why. And he says that you took the gun. So that puts you in the frame for the second shooting at the factory. What second shooting? Oh, come on. You're not looking at two years, you're looking at 15. Now, it couldn't have been Stuart Penrice because he was banged up in here. You'll fit him me up. I will do if you don't talk. I never had the gun. Where is it? You must have it, you meant bastard. What do you mean? Stu dropped it, clumsy git, at the factory as we were getting in the car. You dropped the gun in the car park at the factory? We never had a chance to pick it up. Boxley's playing the hero, and then the other one comes out, his son. What's all this, son? What are you playing at? I'm being boss for once. Being boss of my own life. Sit down. I can't. I've got a gummy leg. Sit down. We thought you were dead. We thought you'd been roasted alive. You let us go on thinking that. Why? Because it suited you. No one else counts for anything, do they? Hey? I mean, Jimmy Dunny only devoted his working life to your business. So what the hell? Get him killed! You know, he should lock you up, not Pim Rice. Those you don't kill, you trample over. I never trampled on you, son. What? You've blighted my life since the age of seven. No matter what I've tried, no matter what I've done, you've always been there to rubbish it. That's not true. What about your music? What, there, there, Kevin, you go off and be a rock star? You call that encouragement? I gave you a job, for God's sake. Oh, yes. And when I finally give in and say, all right, you win, I'll join the family business, what do I get, eh? I'll tell you what I get. I get my nose rubbed in it. Start at the bottom, son. It's the only way. 
I mean, so what if all the gormless gits in the factory laugh at you? It won't do you any harm. It'll be yours one day. Well, I don't want it. I just want what's mine. My life. Without you. Do you know, I can't even pull a bird without you thinking you've got the right to take over. Yes, I knew about Rachel long ago. And all that time you were laughing behind my back. Stay here and cover the exits. I'll call you if I need you. You've got it all wrong, son, really. Yeah, I have. Because I buggered up killing you twice, and now there's no one else to take the blame. It's all been you. Even the note. Well, shows initiative anyway. Future's in safe hands after all. Don't patronise me! Just don't! All right, OK. Take it easy. Well, look at me! Look at me, Dad! I'm 25 years old! I'm a grown man! A person! I'm not a recycled Bill Boxley! Why can't you accept that? I won't be able to if you pull that trigger now, will I? You couldn't anyway! That's why Jimmy's dead! That's why I'm here now, wanting to kill you! Cos Bill Boxley's king and he loves it! Yeah, you're right. That's the way it's been. But that doesn't mean I don't give a toss about you. That just means I'm stupid, yeah? And I don't want to die a stupid son. I'm begging you. I'm pleading with you, and I've never pleaded with anyone, not in my whole life. Just for the chance to make amends. Hey, shoot me in 12 months' time, hey, if things aren't different. Yeah? I love you, son. I just got a funny way of showing you, that's all. Hey. I'm sorry. I never guessed. No. Not did I. Occur to you to wait for an armed backup? Oh, sorry, sir. Well, there you go. You know me. Yes, indeed. Well, delighted though I am to hear of a family rapprochement. I hope at least we're going to charge the son with wasting police time, if not withholding evidence and attempted murder. Oh, my mistake. I thought not pressing charges was fine this week. You're referring, no doubt, to Mrs. Kelsey and Ms. Parfit. Yes, Miss Kelsey is not going to press charges for assault, which means D.S. Lawson's preferences won't be displayed in court. So, disaster averted. No thanks to you. In any case, uh, D.S. Lawson is leaving us. You what? Yes, a suitable vacancy has arisen and she's decided to, uh, to move on. To where? Cornwall, I believe. Buy you a drink. Oh, no, thanks, Gaffer. Packing to do. Start Monday. Thank you for, um, well, doing your best for me, Mr. Mullet. I don't know why he wants to send you to Cornwall. Maybe he thinks it's catching. There again, you're a police officer. If you make a mess on your own doorstep, you're bound to slip on it. It's the way it works. So, 
What's going to happen to uh, Liz? She won't go back to Marion, presumably. No. No. Two more lonely people in the world. Yeah. Anyway. Nice to work with you again. Yes, and, and you.